Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, that is Charles, because today is the 6th of May 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, now then, uh, just a quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So it'll take you this page, which we, as I said, update on a daily basis. So um, now then uh, quickly, let's see what's happening here globally. So this was the figure from this morning. So yeah, I mean, uh, it's of course the number has risen, but let's see by how much. Um, so previous number was three, around 3,660,000. Uh, uh, now, yeah, the number has risen by almost around uh, 20,000 globally, what, what, which is still okay. Um, of course, the total amount of deaths continues to rise, especially in the US and the UK. Um, so yeah, let's continue observing how that's going to be uh, coming along. So um, hopefully everything can slow down because uh, looking at the daily cases, you can see that there is a bit of a decline here. So um, so yeah, hopefully let's continue. Let's let's hope this continues to decline. Yeah. Um, now then, jumping into a few indices here. Now the first one I want to touch on here is the FTSE 100. I talked about this one this morning. Just a quick. Uh, uh, brief overview uh, because not much has changed. Uh, still, we are keeping close eye on these two barriers, the highlighted areas, uh, because a break, we need to see a break of these um, in order to um, consider uh, in order to consider a further directional move. So basically what I was saying that if we get a push above this barrier here, the 5,895 zone, then yes, there is a possibility for this one to drift further north. Um, this is uh, after after a break of this level, we will consider higher levels because still, of course, to get comfortable with higher levels, we would need to see a push above the highest point of, of April, which is roughly around the 6,151.52 zone. Uh, but we can start considering higher levels if we get a push above this barrier here, the 5,895 zone. So um, looking at the cash index right now, uh, or actually, no, sorry, I do apologize, not the cash index, we'll, we'll jump into the next one later. So, but this is the current activity right now. Um, so it's currently, we're seeing currently that the price is trading below this barrier. So in a way, uh, we're very cautious and careful right now. Although it seems that it wants to drift higher, we still, we would like to see that confirmation break and ideally a daily close above this territory, above the 5,895 zone. So let's see where this index is gonna close today. Uh, jumping into NASDAQ 100, now this is where we'll have a look at the cash index and what it's doing right now because the index is not open yet. Um, so previously when I looked at this one, as you can see by the Fibonacci here, uh, for previously I talked about uh, some of these Fibonacci levels and uh, basically you can see that yesterday, for example, the index closed slightly in the, uh, in the positive territory um, and uh, well, gaining around 1%. Uh, well, this is still maybe a decent gain. However, as you can see, it failed to push above that, uh, or should I say, it failed to stay above that psychological 9,000 zone yesterday. Um, and uh, this is what I talked about previously when I was covering NASDAQ 100. And what I was saying that uh, in a way for us to get comfortable with higher levels, we need to see a push above that uh, psychological 9,000 territory. And then, yep, we could aim for higher levels. Um, and ideally, we would like to see 
see a daily close, but uh, we keep getting these pushes through 9,000 level, but we, we are failing to close above it. So for now, we, we remain uh, cautious and probably a little bit more on the neutral side, because even with the downside, we would like to see maybe a drop below the um, initially below the 8,665 zone, which is the uh, the low of uh, the current lowest point of this week, uh, and then just for that extra confirmation, a drop below the uh, 8,600 level here could do the trick for more sellers, and uh, this of course automatically would place the price below the 21-day EMA here on the daily chart. So maybe this could kind of uh, trigger more uh, sellers to join in. So that's why we'll keep an eye on this level, uh, keep an eye on the 8,600 zone. Uh, but again, for now, given that the uh, the the price is closer um, closer to the 9,000 territory, and looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is currently balancing at around 8,980 zone, roughly around there. So not far, basically, from the psychological 9,000 zone. So let's see how it's going to play out today. Uh, but yep, for now, guys, be very careful and uh, wait for that confirmation break. Now, gold. Um, gold is drifting lower today. Um, so yesterday we got a, a bit of a close above the 170304 zone that I talked about. But as you can see, that was not enough for the bulls to jump in and drive this one higher today. So you can see that the, the bears for now are dictating the rules. However, as I've mentioned previously, in order to get comfortable with lower levels, we would like to see a daily close below the 1680 zone, because for now, uh, it's in no man's land, and uh, it might move up and down here, uh, because it's currently stuck within this kind of, well, let's call it range. It's not an ideal range, but uh, it's stuck in this little range here, roughly between the 1680 and uh, uh, 1747 level on the upside. So uh, that's why for now we'll remain neutral. We're just going to continue observing this one. If it drops below the 1680s territory, then yes, we will start looking at lower levels. But until then, um, as long as it stays above the um, above this 21-day EMA here. Well, it still has a chance to push higher. Um, however, uh, again, it's a little bit difficult right now, even with the upside, as you can see, it's trying to make its way higher, but it's failing to do so. So uh, in a way, what we could do here is, we can probably start skipping the, the 170304 level because it keeps getting violated. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, from the short term perspective, we're gonna capture this uh, high, the high of this, this week, which is um, roughly around 1714, 15 zone. So 1715 territory, roughly around there. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this one. If we get a nice push above this, then yes, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high for this week. And uh, yep, uh, higher levels could be met. So this is how we could play this one out from the very short term perspective. So that's why guys be very careful right now. And uh, yep, let's see how all this is going to play out. Now then, Brent Oil. So uh, Brent Oil... Um, is, well, it was pushing higher up until today. So today it's, we're seeing a bit of a correction here from the uh, 32.21 level that uh, it managed to reach this morning. Um, however, it still remains above the 21-day EMA, so maybe some um, buyers could still still see this as a good, as a positive um, as a positive kind of sign. Uh, but oh, again, let's not forget that it could still be only from the short-term perspective because um, even if it travels back up here, um, let's say if, if it rebounds from the 21-day EMA somewhere here and travels back to the upside, the upside is still limited near this downside line taken from the high of the 8th of January. So again, uh, be very careful for those who are more on the cautious side. You could just wait for a push above the 32.21 zone. And this way the, the commodity would confirm a forthcoming higher high. And then we could target this key area of resistance near the 36.10 zone. So let's keep an eye on this one. Uh, Bitcoin. So uh, finally pushing higher and again testing this downside line. And let me just remind you what this line is. I'm looking at the Bit, uh, Bitfinex exchange here and let me just remind what this line is. So this is this downside, uh, a bit of a tentative, I do understand, but still a downside line taken from the high of the, uh, the highest point of December 2017. So as you can see, 
looking at this monthly chart, you can see that the price is currently knocking on the door here of this downside line again. And the big question, can this push further north? And could we see a monthly candle closing above this? Of course, don't get me wrong, the month has just started. So uh, that's why let's jump back into a daily chart and let's keep an eye on this downside line. If it continues to struggle to overcome this, uh, this downside line, then well, I mean, we could see uh, a, a bit of a correction here back to the downside. Of course, we could draw some some upside lines here, for example, like this one. Uh, taken from the low of the 13th of March and uh, and in a way um, yeah I mean if, if it drifts lower still the bulls could re-enter somewhere around here and and drive this one higher but for now from this point in time uh, we're keeping a close eye on this downside line let's see how this is going to play out and if this downside line is going to continue holding the uh, the price down if it doesn't if we see a daily close above this well and especially if we see a daily close above the high of last week which is around the 9442 zone then this is where it could become very interesting for the buyers and uh, we could see this one traveling further north towards the highest point of february near the 10491 zone so let's keep an eye on this one uh, could be quite interesting but again first we'll, we'll all eyes are on this downside line and let's see if it holds if it doesn't well uh, the bulls could be welcomed uh, USD CAD now here uh, just a quick update not much has changed I talked about this one still we are in a range we're not doing anything overall here uh, but from the short-term perspective, what I was mentioning that we could still target uh, the upside as long as the rate remains above the 21-day EMA. So as you can see, that's what's happening right now. So the uh, the the pair is still balancing above the 21-day EMA. Today, we saw a bit of a drift lower. However, it is still, as you can see, the bulls managed to push this one back up. And uh, yep, now it's kind of, uh, it seems that it's flagging out here a little bit. So there is a chance for this one to drift higher. Uh, but initially, from the very short-term perspective, what we're going to target is this 1.4261 territory, roughly around here, which is the high of the uh, 6th of April. And also, marks the kind of the upper bound of this range in terms of the downside if by any chance the daily candle drops below the 21 day EMA here and closes below this then it increases the chances of a potential test of the lower side of the range uh, but again as I said uh, in order to kind of examine a further directional move we need to see a clear break through one of these highlighted areas USD JPY quick update here so this morning uh, I was telling you guys to watch this 106 point uh, 34 territory uh, because what I was saying that in a way uh, we've managed to already this morning we already managed to break this level but if it continues to push further south well I mean this could uh, lead the pair towards initially towards this 105.94 territory which is marked by the intraday uh, in inside swing high of the 10th of March but if that is just seen as a temporary obstacle then the next possible uh, target could be around 105.12 zone right here which is the low of the 16th of March so we'll keep an eye on this one again for now all eyes are on the daily candle let's see if the pair manages to close below this territory today the 106.34 if it does then yes it increases the chances of a potential move uh, lower um, however of course don't get me wrong we tomorrow we could re we could reverse to the upside and then you know retest this downside line what i'm talking about here is that uh, we're trying to in, in kind of increase our uh, probability of let's say uh, or trying to uh, trying to find a probability where it could go next so and that's why I mean that if this, if the candle stays below this territory, uh, then yes, uh, like I said, we it, it increases the probability of uh, drifting further south. So again, that's why we're going to be very careful still, guys. Uh, we'll have a stop loss in place, and uh, for now, the pair is today confirming a fourth, uh, a new lower low. So let's see if it can continue drifting further south. Similar story here with GBP JBY. This is what I talked about as well, and. Uh, Basically, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this on this little range and uh, in order to aim for deeper extensions to the downside, we needed a nice good daily close below the 132.44 zone. So let's see if uh, today the candle can stay here, the daily candle can stay here. For now, everything is kind of leaning towards that. So uh, for now, yes, we are more bearish than bullish. 
so um, of course uh, if this stays here then the next target that we're going to be aiming for will be somewhere around here somewhere near the 129.4645 zone so uh, so yep keep your eyes on that one uh, GBP USD uh, still uh, we remain neutral although it is drifting a little bit lower still as you can see it remains above this short-term upside support line so that's why for now we're not gonna do anything here uh, what I've mentioned this morning that uh, in order to get comfortable with a further directional move what we need here is either a push above the 1.264850 territory here or uh, we need to see a nice good drop below the 1.224750 zone roughly around there which is the low of the uh, 21st of April and then we could consider deeper extensions to the downside for now uh, it's stuck here still so in a way don't let's not exclude a possibility for this one to test the the upside line here and then rebound back to the upside so again uh, that's why we will get comfortable with lower levels only if we see a drop below the 1.2247 zone euro Aussie so euro Aussie uh, is drifting lower so uh, after when I last time it spoke about this one uh, or should I say actually last week when I spoke about this one we were uh, trading around here and what I was saying that in a way if it pushes higher and uh, overcomes this downside line this uh, and especially if it uh, pushes above the uh, 1.70 territory here somewhere uh, then uh, we could consider further acceleration to the upside now uh, it did travel further north however as you can see it found good resistance near the 21 day EMA um, so uh, it did overshoot it but it didn't manage to close any of, the, any of the daily candles above it so this kind of raised a little bit of a concern however now it, yes it is drifting lower right now but uh, for us to get comfortable with lower levels and start examining lower levels we would need to see this one dropping below the uh, the lowest point of April which is around the 1.6540 zone um, uh, and only then we would consider lower levels because here it could drift a little bit lower for now I mean and if it starts re suddenly reversing back to the upside all this could be seen as a as a as a higher low and uh, basically if it's a higher low then well I mean it could reverse to the upside the trend could start be becoming to the upside here and uh, well we could uh, see a nice push further north here and we could even overcome the the current highest point of May uh, which is uh, this one right here the the 1.7 196 zone so um, again for now guys like I said be very careful yes it is drifting lower however we're still uh, not really kind of let's say um, getting rid of the idea of a potential upside because what we want to see here if this pair is going to form a higher low if it drops below this territory below the 1.6540 now this is where yep um, it could drift to the downside further further down because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and well I mean the level here the 1.6086 level would be back on the table so that's why we will remain very careful for now um, for those who are more on the cautious side you if you want to examine the upside you could wait for a push above the 1.7196 zone and then aim for higher levels I do understand we're missing out on a on a bit of a on a bit of a territory here but uh, yeah uh, if you want to be on the safe side you could keep your eyes on that on that level if you are a little bit on the riskier side now looking at this four hour chart what you could do is keep your eyes on this little level the high of yesterday uh, or it's actually an intraday swing high of yesterday which is around the 1.6880 zone so a nice good push above this on the four hour chart you can see it would place the uh, the rate above the 21 day EMA so maybe more buyers could see this is a good opportunity to step in so that's why uh, for now we're going to be very careful and uh, f this level here uh, could be for those on the uh, who are a little bit more on the risky side however don't forget your stop losses guys uh, because in a way this pair does like to move sharply uh, in either of directions so in order not to get kind of stopped out uh, have a 
have a tight stop loss. But again, as I said, uh, the riskier option to consider higher levels would be after this, after 1.6880, but the more cautious one would be somewhere after around the 1.7196 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. And the downside, as I, as I previously mentioned, uh, is after the uh, a break after a break of 1.6540 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. And finally, Euro USD. So uh, this one drifted lower, and as you can see, we've managed to reach well, actually almost just fell shy of a few points from hitting the 1.0777 zone, the one that I keep talking about. And as you can see, now it reversed back to the upside. So basically, it continues to confirm that this is a nice range here, a nice wide range. Um, in order to, like I said, aim for a further directional move to the downside here, uh, then yes, we would like to see a, a nice daily close below the 1.0777. Um, and in terms of the upside, we would need to see a break above this 1.0990. However, I do understand that we have already moved quite a bit from this upper bound of the range. So in a way, if you would like to consider higher levels here, now jumping into a four hour chart, uh, probably, uh, well, this is a difficult one, so probably we could maybe look at higher levels somewhere from around here, maybe. So, uh, this little area, the 1.0847 or 50, you could round it up towards the 50, and then we could maybe aim for higher levels. However, it's still very tricky, guys, so probably for now, let's wait this one out. Let's see how it behaves near this lower side of the range, near this key area of support around the 1.0770 uh, 1.0777 because if it continues to provide support then yes we will maybe look at something like this here uh, but uh, for now it's it's still drifting lower so it could again revisit this territory but if it fails this time to provide decent support then well I mean uh, deeper extensions to the downside could be possible so keep your eyes on this one guys Okay, so um, I hope you found it useful, guys, and uh, thank you very much for sticking around and watching it till the end. Um, if you want to catch my video tomorrow, my Traders Espresso, uh, as always, that's um, 6 o'clock GMT time or a little bit after that. And uh, yeah, we'll pick up on some of these instruments, some new ones, and then we'll take it from there. So I hope you have a nice evening, guys, and uh, stay safe. Stay safe both market-wise and health-wise. And, uh, yep, like I said, catch my video tomorrow, uh, my Trader's Espresso, around 6 o'clock GMT time. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.